Good day. We've got these lettuce, which are going to go into the bed behind me, which I have just raked in this glorious sunshine. And then next to it, or next to the lettuce, we have some Portuguese cabbage, which I think is going to go in the Brussels sprouts bed. And then we've got these uh, chard at the back and parsley and coriander at the front, which I think are going to go into the bed where the peppers are. Maybe not this week, maybe next week. But yes, these I'm just going to lay out on this bed. Quite a decent quick job done there, but of course we'd prepared the whole bed um, several weeks ago, in fact I, I think over a month ago, and just kept an eye on weeds since. And I put them in two lines about a bit over a foot apart. I think I could have bought these in a little bit actually, maybe another inch or so on either side. But what I have done is I've left enough area down here and enough area down here and at the bottom here to put in fleece because these will need to be fleeced over the winter months. They won't, um, they won't survive. Well, they may survive depending upon how cold our, our winter gets, but I'm going to give them a bit of protection because what I want them to do is grow on well now without any protection and then I'll fleece them in a couple of weeks when the nights really start dropping in temperature and hopefully they'll carry on growing into the end of November and then most probably grow very, very slowly over the winter months. I'm noticing, I'm not sure if you are, but there's a lot of flies around today. I mean, I think they're enjoying the sunlight. This area here is where we have our washing up bowl ponds. This one here is sunken. This one there is above ground. And there are frogs in there. But what I'm noticing is you can see that this lily here 
Can you see that it's producing seeds? Those seeds are either beginning to drop out or they're beginning to be eaten. So what I'm going to do is cut off this head, these seed pods, because that's what they are, three individual seed pods, one here, one here, and one here, which as you can see are opening. So you can see they're ripe. And I'm going to seed save from those. I've never ever seed saved from a pond iris. That's what it is, not a linny, a pond iris before. But I'm going to do it now and then I'll have to do a Google to see how I look after the seeds and propagate them. Well, we certainly have glorious sunshine this afternoon. We had sunshine this morning and I thought we'd had the best of the day this morning, but I had to be at my desk so I couldn't get down here. But no, um, I needed to come down for a meeting with the charity at 2.30. And since then, the sun has been quite glorious. So I had my meeting with them talking about various things on the site jobs that we need to do, jobs that the charity needs to think about. And um, and that was all really good, which is great. And then I thought, yeah, time to get those lettuce in. As I said, that bed has been prepared for them for quite a while. And it's a really soft, loamy, composty soil. It's That's one of the, the beds that has the best soil structure in it by far. We've got some other beds which are really quite solid compared to that, though nothing like the clay soil that, that Vivi has to deal with, I must say now. Um, yeah, so those those lettuce, I, I think looking at them again, I could have tucked them more into the middle of the bed on both sides by another inch or two. But what I have done is I've left enough at the edge, enough space at the edge to put hoops in and put a fleece tunnel over them. Whether that's a fleece tunnel that I think we may have, whether that's a fleece tunnel I may buy, or whether that's one that I might make, which I think is most likely, um, you don't want the, the fleece to really sit on top of soft leaf salad plants over the winter months because the whole point of creating that that tunnel is to create an air pocket um, a permeable air pocket so that air can can get in and out through the fleece but create an air pocket that will be warmed by the sun and retain its heat as much as possible as it gets into the hours of cooler temperatures of night time. So you want to create that air pocket. And what you don't want is you don't want salad leaves touching the fleece, because if they do, you could just be transferring the, the cold from outside directly onto the fleece, directly onto your salad leaf, and then your salad leaves will frost, or at least the ones that are touching. So best to try and make sure that whenever you do hoop something with fleece, it does have good space to grow. And I think I think we're doing fine, but I could have nudged them in an inch or two, as I say, on either side. Now, when you're netting things like brassicas, you're netting them for, for different reasons. You're you're netting them in our case here to keep birds off or to keep the cabbage white butterfly off. So you're netting things for different reasons and you're using a different type of net. That's why you have netting, you have fleece, you have gauze, you have wider netting. You know, there's a whole host of different types of, of cover that you can get. And in fact, you know, you can get polythene as well. I don't think we've got any here, but you can get polythene polytunnels, which act a bit like miniature polytunnels, if you like. Um, and that will give additional warmth during the day, just like a fleece will. I do find, though, or a friend has found that when she has grown with them, that 
the temperature has been lost quite quickly overnight from day to night. So, yeah. And then I saw the the lily, the the um, the iris, the pond iris. And I saw that the seed pods of that were opening. So why would I not pick those pods and seed save from them? As I say, I don't really know what to do, but a little bit of Googling, a little bit of chatting to people who know about um, water plants far, far better than I do, I'm sure will be instructive. So I'll do that. And then I wanted some carrots for this evening. Um, I'm not quite sure what we're going to have for supper, but I wanted to have some carrots. I need to think about whether it's going to be a sort of steamed supper. We had a really nice omelette last night or crustless quiche, as someone said, on Planet Vegetaria. What we're going to have this evening, we might have some mash with carrots, Portuguese cabbage and Linda McCartney sausages, maybe. But I need to decide on that before I go home. Because if we're going to have something that's more salad based with grated carrot, I need to take some lettuce home because I'll want some of that with it. And um, I don't want to get home to suddenly think, oh, we're going to have something more salady. I better get back down to the plot and pick that lettuce. But the lettuce that we've got here, it should, um, it's by where the tarbe and the um, oh, Canadian white beans were. It's doing really well. Um, it's got a nice flavour to it. It will get slightly more bitter as it gets colder. But I think we've got a good, depending upon weather, um, I think we've got a good four weeks supply in the outside bed there. So hopefully by the time that that set of lettuce starts dying back, if it does die back, anyway, the other set of lettuce will have really started getting away with itself. And, you know, do appreciate that you have transplant shock. So I've transplanted those lettuce into that bed today. I don't expect them to suddenly go, yay, we've got lots of space. Let's grow and be double the size next week. They need to, their roots need to sort of get used to the soil that they're in and start making their way through the little bits of air and, and soil in their surrounds, get their little hairy bits of their roots into the nutrients before they can start growing again. So do remember, you'll often have a little bit of transplant shock, but I think those will be fine, fingers crossed. Anyway, that's it for today. I'm most probably gonna be pottering down here for another half an hour or so. I didn't take the other bean frames out yesterday, so maybe that's a job I will get on with now. Anyway, welcome to the first segment of A Week at the Plot. Welcome to the end of the first segment of A Week at the Plot. See you soon. Bye. Good day. A few weeks ago, we looked at the seeds that we're going to be sowing and growing this coming year, mainly vegetables. And I thought it would be good to show you this document here, which I use to try and keep a track of when things need to be sown, when we can expect harvests, um, obviously all the, the varieties that we're going to be um growing and where the seeds are from and um, I also then put into here dates when I'm going to be sowing so let's say we let's say we sow these on the 27th these bunyards exhibition which I've got a question mark next to anyway but let's say we sow these on the 27th of October and they germinate G for germinate on the 10th of November. I put G-10 for germinated on the 10th. And then I also put dash how many days it is from germination. So what is it? 30 days in September, April. So it's 31. So that's four. So that would be 14 there. So here I would know that I've sown them on the 27th of October. And in here, 
I can see that they germinated on the 10th of November and that was 14 days from sowing. And then I, not in the case of these because they're going to be, these are going to be direct. But if I'm going to be potting something um, or putting something out or pricking them out, then I put it, you know, following on from here. Um, so in this column, I've got the, the vegetables that we're going to be growing. This column is the varieties. If there's a question mark, it means am I going to be doing that next year? Where the seeds are from, as I say, how they're going to be sown the number we require, what area they're going to be um, growing in, and then the months here along the top. So let's just clear this because we don't know what day we're going to be sowing those yet, though that is going to be coming up. I found out when shucking the podding, the Shaz's Scarlet Emperor beans last night, that there is there were 11 pods with five shiny black seeds in. So I put Shaz's New Black as a, a new variety that we're going to be growing next year. But you can see all the, the names, the varieties, where we're going to be getting things from. And, and here we can see that Burpees Golden is coming from Vital Seeds. We're going to be sowing these in, poly, in the polytunnel in modules. With the golden, what I've decided is we're going to, those are coming from beans and herbs, and we're going to sow those direct in the soil. Here, I've added a column in for September, which I don't normally have, but because I sowed the Bright Lights Swiss chard on the 5th of September, I put those in, in a separate column, and we also sowed the Marvel of Four Seasons, which actually I, I planted out yesterday, so what I should do here is on this date or yesterday, I should, I already haven't put when they're germinated, but I have put planted out the 11th of October, which is 26, 35, 35 days from sowing. I should put a germination in there. I'll look back and put that in as well. But if we go down, there's another one, Northern Queen. You'll remember that these didn't actually germinate. So, oh, I'm putting an X in here as they didn't germinate. If we go down to last year, you get a better idea. So let's have a look at these. Um, well, let's have a look at the Black Beauty aubergine, which, as you know, didn't do well for us last year because it was very old seed. So we sowed them on the 18th of January. They germinated on the 18th of February. I think there was only two that germinated. And then we um, potted them up on the 7th of April, which was 79 days. They never got going. So again, there's an X in there because they died away. And then we did a second sowing on the 2nd of March and none of those germinated either. So put an X to say that that was the end of that growing season because nothing actually happened. If we come down to the beetroot, Avalanche, you'll see that we sow that in modules in the polytunnel on the 23rd of February. They germinated on the 13th of March, which is 18 days from sowing. And then we planted them out on the 18th of April. So that's planted out PO. And that was 54 days from sowing. So that's sort of how I keep a, a track of things or try and keep a track of things. When it when it gets into full season, I sort of tend not to <laughs> put when I start harvesting. But maybe that's a challenge for me for this coming year. So, yeah, that's a sort of brief video of how we try and keep track of what we are sowing and growing 
how, when, when the harvest will be, where the seed is from. And actually, it works pretty well for, for us up to, I think, planting out. And then I find that things just get quite overwhelming when it can come to the amount of work being done in sort of May and June. And I, I don't follow things through. But maybe this coming year I will. Yeah, so there we are. Um, it would be interesting to know if you do anything similar or whether you just use a notebook or whether you don't use anything at all. And um, maybe you just go buy a seed packet and do planning. But uh, there we are. This is how I try and organise what we are sowing and growing. We'll have a look at this again, maybe in sort of February and March when we start sowing some of these seeds. OK, see you soon. Bye. Good day. The sun is setting behind the trees, behind you. For the last hour, it's been a gorgeous afternoon. I'm not sure what the rest of the day was like, really, because I was at my desk. But I needed to get out. I needed to come down here and just have a bit of me time. It's been a, a hectic week. And, of course, we've had... Richard's dad's funeral as well. So we've been up to Macclesfield for that. It's a great funeral. It really was. The service was was fab. And of course, the, the wonderful thing about funerals is you meet people that you haven't seen for years. And in, in my case, I met people that used to be Richard's next door neighbours when he was a kid, you know, and, and, and they're, you know, they're now all quite a bit older, um, of course. So yeah, it was a it was a lovely day. Sad, of course, but but lovely. And yeah, we got back, and this is the first time I've been at the plot for a while. I had meant to take down the bamboos of the two sets of remaining beans, but hadn't done that. So I've taken those down, as you've seen. They're behind me here. I really need to think. I thought this is a good way putting them in a pallet and slotting them in. 
the the issue is of course bamboos weigh quite a bit so they're pressing against this uh post here this vertical post so i think i need to find a a different way to store them not quite sure how as i say we've got you know there's a lot of weight because we've got so many last year also because they were all fanning like this up here um there was so much they became a wall so actually when we had quite strong winds they blew over onto the area behind so yeah i need to to think about that and of course as well as doing the clearing of that i have got so much to do on the plot i think i'm going to show you tomorrow because boy is there a lot to do <laughs> there really is um but you know what things are growing as well so everything is fine everything is sweet so that that's all right and look what else is sweet turnips so um these are purple top milan so they're lovely really pleased to have those those are the first from the the sewing we did a maybe six weeks ago something like that there's a plane going over you can you will be able to hear it because they they seem to be making so much noise at the moment and of course they're not that's just a small one So yeah, they're, they're, when, when Heathrow kicks them out our way, they really seem to kick them out our way at the moment. So yeah, turnips, first uh, picking of those purple top Milan. They seem to be growing really well. Of course, more carrots. You can see here, look. Carrot root fly, we do get it from now on, um, but yeah. That's going to be nice and edible. There's another, that's one of the lunar white. So we've got turnips, got carrots, going to pick some of the Portuguese cabbage and some potatoes. And, or should we have roasted? No, we'll have, um, sorry, I was, I was thinking to myself, shall we have, um, I love roasted vegetables, roasted in the oven, with tomato sauce on rice. I just absolutely love that. And we normally add some chickpeas or some beans into that to, to give us the protein. But I think tonight it's going to be um, a bit indulgent. I think we might have country pies again. Linda McCartney's country pies. I don't know, <laughs> don't know what accent that was. <laughs> But uh, it was my Cornish accent, I think. But it could have come across as from Maryland or something like that. So, yeah, there's a lot to do. I'm going to show you tomorrow. I'm going to leave it here now. Oh, we've got some, we've got some pumpkin. I could do some roast, uh, roast squash as well. Oh, I think we're going to have roast squash with this. Do I want to have... Oh, no, because if we're having Linda McCartney pies, then they've got pastry on them. So actually, I don't think I'm going to take any potatoes home. I'm just going to pick some more Portuguese cabbage and take one of the squash from the um, from the polytunnel home that we've already harvested. Oh, there's this one as well, which is one that from uh, Vivi's plants. So I think we're going to make that one into a soup. Um yeah look i'm waffling aren't i waffling rambling going on about nothing uh but also going on about food i'm gonna leave it there <laughs> and i'll see you again tomorrow and i will show you i'm not going to do a plot tour um video this month i don't think uh we're so far into it at the moment and actually there's there's more things this is a busy month so there's more things that are going on for me so i don't think i'm going to get time to do a full plot tour so i think tomorrow i'll give you a little tour of how the plot is looking at the moment because it's looking a bit of a shambles but that's fine see you tomorrow
I'm going to say goodbye before this other plane comes over. Bye. Good day. I said yesterday that I would show you the shambles of the plot. Look, even the, the lavender there needs cutting back. This all needs weeding. But you know what? The Brussels sprouts are doing okay. But what I've noticed, there's been a bit of pecking here. So I'm going to have to cover these now because of pigeons, their food source is obviously getting a bit tight. If I come over here, these are the bits of tar bay and Canadian white left. Look at that over there. Gosh. So much tidying to do so much oh but look at the look at the blueberry there that's just gorgeous on the chair over there is pods from beans that i've podded at home in mean, this bed well this bed here is where if i get my shadow out of the way is where our garlic is going to go and then this one, I think, is where we're going to put the chard and coriander and parsley. As I say, I'm not doing a plot tour this month, so this will do as our sort of plot tour. These are the brassicas that we found at the back of the polytunnel a couple of months ago. And you know what? They're doing okay. They're doing okay. This is where the tar bay were. We've got lettuce growing really well here. It's beginning to go to seed. We need to harvest that. Uh, celery here. Celery and then our single butternut squash. These carrots, we're down to our last dregs of carrots now. Maybe another week's worth here. And then parsnips at the end, which are shouldering up quite nicely. And then, oh, look at that. Isn't that gorgeous? Look at the colour. Look at that. And then here is our brassica bed, ex tomato bed. Yeah, I mean, just doing so well. Though I have to say, the dazzling blue kale, you can most probably see, in fact, we've got dazzling blue kale here, Cavolo Nero here, and then at the end, dazzling blue kale again. So I think we can see which are the bigger plants, and it's definitely the dazzling blue kale. But talking about big plants, let's go over there. So big. My netting doesn't cover them. I'm going to have to do something about this. Maybe get extra netting because what I've noticed today, where is it here? Look, look at all that jagged pecking from pigeons. Don't usually get that on Portuguese cabbage. Look at those leaves in there. Look, you can see how big the leaves are, wider than my hand, and so great, really, really good. Oh, things on the bench to sort out, things that I've been going to sort out for ages. So much tidying to do. <laughs> but you know what? 
it's fine. There are other things that have taken our time over the last month. And there's other things that will be taking my time and our time over the coming weeks. But that's fine. Getting some raspberries here, which is lovely. I love autumn raspberries. Still need to take those bean canes down over there. This bed, I think, can be sorted. The loose Ottono broad beans, I mean, they're, you know, we put these in as an experiment to see whether they would survive the allelopathic sunflower, and certainly they have. So, yeah, time to sort that. Oh, I did lift this up. This is a bit of felt and it heats up in the sun and we sometimes see some creatures under there like slow worms and things but the last time I lifted it up there wasn't anything in there if I've still got that clip I'll I'll put it in but if not you won't see it this bed is just nutritionally it seems to be fine but things just don't seem to get away in it whilst that bed which we sowed with lettuce a week ago or at the beginning of this week the lettuce all seems sort of quite happy yeah so I'm pleased about that more Portuguese cabbage here which needs to go out and then this is where I was talking about the the chard and the coriander and parsley that we're going to be putting out but yeah look how everything needs a tidy everything needs to be sorted but you know what i've got the time one thing i do need to be is a bit more ruthless with certain things if i think i'm not going to be using a plant or have room for a plant I need to to say no I'm not going to have that aren't those gorgeous and actually look what I've just noticed here it's a hollyhock look at that oh look at the red berries of this honeysuckle wow never seen them that red before areas that i need to cut back again the ivy is in full bloom and bees are really enjoying it which is great more tidying more tidying but yeah, you know, I'm quite happy with the shambles that it is at the moment. It's both expected and okay. Expected and acceptable. Though I do need to get on when I can and tidy things up. Oh, let's just have a look in here, see how things are doing in here. Carrots doing well. I don't think any carrots are forming yet, but they're growing. These are the peppers that we took out from the bed the other day. Looking a bit sorry for themselves, but you know what? They're also sort of coming back, so that's okay. And then the cuttings we took of the lavender at the front here and of the thornless blackberry at the back. But yeah, everything sort of is looking, oh, don't want that snail in here. Everything is looking very autumnal, but that's okay. Right. I've got the AGM of the community gardens in about 30 minutes, so I better get home and get ready for that. 
and then hopefully I'll have some time tomorrow to actually do a couple of hours work of tidying. See you very soon. Bye. Good day. It's really quite early in the morning and I've just been at my desk this morning doing a number of things but sorting out paperwork for our allotment association AGM which is next weekend and one of those jobs is doing a notice which I've put on the notice board. Everyone's been informed about the date of the AGM for quite a few months now. Usually it's a year in advance of course but last year we postponed the AGM and then cancelled the AGM. So we're having the AGM in its usual place which is next weekend. And yeah, so I put a notice on the notice board and then later on today an email will be going out to everybody and also that will be on our WhatsApp and our Facebook groups as well, which are both private groups. So I was doing that and it really has turned out to be quite a grey day today compared to yesterday and quite damp. I met one of our neighbours, a lovely Irish lady, as I was coming down here and she was telling me to make sure I wrap up because it's not the cold that does the damage, it's the damp. So uh, there we are, there we are. So I most probably will be back later on to sort out quite a bit of the detritus that I have <laughs> created <laughs> and also some of the detritus that has grown. But next week is quite a busy week. I'm not sure how much I'm going to get down here. Uh, I might only get down at the weekend, in fact, because of other commitments. It just so happens that for, for us, October has turned into a very uh, time-heavy month, which has meant I haven't been able to get down here as much as I would normally have done. But yes, there we are. So I hope to be down later to start doing a bit of the clearing here to, as I mentioned yesterday, cover the Brussels sprouts. I'll just put some netting over them, like the scaff netting we've got over the beetroot turnips and the additional brassica bed. But it's just so lovely and quiet. You most probably can hear a rumble in the background because it's damp we can hear the m4 at the moment which is about a good couple of miles away from us i think but i can i can hear it i'm not sure if you can and a plane has just been going into heathrow seem to be going in today rather than coming out um, they take two flight paths one which is over canary wharf which in the winter we can see from the back of our house and that that's, must be a good 17, 20 miles away from us. Um, but yeah, it's, uh, we can see it from the, the back of our house in the winter time. We can see the flashing light on the top. Um, and then on the other side of our house at the top, we can see planes just before they land at Heathrow. So that's a normal pl flight path. And another normal flight path is the one that comes in over Windsor. So yeah, I'm just going to sit here for a little bit and enjoy the rather sort of 
dull as in muffled, quiet. I can hear another... Oh, I can hear swans somewhere in the distance. You can always hear those swan wings when they're flying. And there's another plane above us somewhere in the cloud as well, which I can hear, which is going over us. Smaller plane. Anyway, I will leave it there. See you again at some point next week. Bye. I just realized I didn't say what I did at the beginning. So at the beginning of this video, I tied a red ribbon around one of the London market carrots. They have done quite well for us and they're not readily available as a seed. And I thought I would try and save seed from one of the carrots. So I've looked at a few. I've looked at only ones that are at the edge because we're going to have potatoes in this bed next year, early potatoes. So I want a carrot that isn't going to be in the middle of the bed because that will just um, get in the way of planting the potatoes. So that one that I marked with a red ribbon right at the beginning is a London market carrot that we're going to try and save seed from. So I'm going to leave that in the ground. I'm not going to harvest it. And what I hope is that it will die back over the winter because that's what normally happens and then it will regrow in the spring and it will then go to flower and then set seed and then I will cover it with a Muslim bag and try and save the seed so that's what I was doing right at the beginning anyway I am going now See you soon. Bye.